Uh, here's the file uh, boat. Um, now this this one uh, is uh, primarily an example. Uh, it's not fully rendering, and we don't have the, the dynamics and stuff in the boat. But what it does show is uh, use of creating an ocean wake and then emitting into it uh, from uh, particles. And there are some uh, some expressions going on. There's also you can see attached to the paddle there is uh, an emitter. So that that emitter emits density into the fluid and emits wake into the fluid. Um, and uh, as well, there are particles emitted, and when the particles hit the surface, uh, they have expressions that transfer um, a little density into the uh, the foam and I think also the uh, the wake grid. So you can pull that apart and see how those expression works, those particle expressions. And uh, it's actually quite similar to the um, splash demo file as well in the way that some of that that stuff works. Here's the file, Big Boat Anim. Uh, this one is a full uh, boat with wake uh, simulation and uh, it um, uses paint effects for the spray on the wake, although you could modify it in a similar fashion to use particles. Um, so it has a, a full ocean. The rendering sets uh, the ocean renders uh, fairly well. So if you want like a, a ocean rendering reference, this one might be good. And also the spray renders, and the spray renders uh, fairly quickly. It's it's paint effects using thin line and uh, uh, the uh, multi streaking in the paint effects, which is fairly fast for rendering a lot of spray. Um, it showed in simplified form in 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 hardware draw here. But but check out the uh, the renders to get an idea of what it looks like. Um, now, the trick here is partly to get the um, uh, spray to emit from the edge where the ocean hits the boat, right? So we need to know what is that colliding region of the, the ocean with the hu boat hull. So in this case, the boat hull is uh, a NURBS uh, surface, and the w there is an additional NURBS plane created here and uh, we have its shaded display uh, actually its full rendering is turned off we don't render this uh, plane at all it's strictly um, uh, a reference NURBS created to do the intersect now to position the CVs on this NURBS plane here so that it uh, they're offset there's expressions that set the CVs using color at point and we have um, included an a MEL script that lets you set one of these up. It's called Ocean NURBS Preview Plane uh, dot MEL. So if you put that in your scripts directory, you can uh, type in Ocean NURBS Preview Plane um, and you check out, I'm not sure if there are any arguments or if it just creates one for the current ocean. Uh, but it, I, I think there are some arguments. You give it the, um, uh, the number of CVs you want, right? So you can, you can have a, a denser you know, grid. Uh, generally, you don't. You want to keep it as as non-dense as possible because it is somewhat slow computing the offsets if you've got hundreds and hundreds of CVs that you're doing inside the expression. Uh, but it does it does position the CV offsets, and then once you have that, you just simply do an intersect uh, of this with your 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 the hull, and you get. Uh, in this case, I've got two sides, so I get two curves because I've done the intersects on either side. Now these intersects, uh, these these intersect curves. Then, um, I I make um, in this case it's not good enough just to have a curve on this plane. What I want is a curve that's right on the hull, so I know what the angle of the hull is. So I I turn that intersect curve into a curve. I project it onto the the hull, so I now have a curve on surface on the hull, and then from that curve on surface. You can do. Um, you can select like a spray brush, or you can actually take this brush if you want. And you can save that as a spray brush, and you attach paint effects. Um, uh, you can do uh, curve utilities. Um, attach brush to curves, so you get like some kind of a spray brush, and you attach it, and then it creates a stroke that then follows that changing curve. So now we've got this paint effect stroke, and this paint effect strokes. Um, if you look on the settings, 
uh, the spray brushes. Um, here's one. It started with the sprinkle thing. We use a thin line, which is fairly fast to render lines. And then under tubes, um, it, it creates tubes, and we have uh, some flow animation. So that determines, the flow animation determines how fast uh, the the gaps kind of move down the line. So if we slow that down, or we could even reverse it, we could have the gaps moving inwards. So now the spray is kind of hard to see in this because it doesn't doesn't display as well in hardware draw. But the uh, the gaps are now moving inwards towards the uh, uh, towards the center of the boat, right? As as it moves. Um, so you can you can play with that to get the flow rate the way you want and stuff. Uh, there's some added. Uh, you can set the gap spacing. So if you want, um, you know, a lot of space between the gaps and the the gap size could be smaller. So you just have individual particles, or you could have big streaming things coming off of it. Kind of depends uh, what kind of effect you're you're after on that. And uh, the actual angle here. Now you notice how the angle. There's more. It's longer here, and the angle's more vertical. And then as it goes to the back, what I've done is on the the actual stroke, we've got uh, pressure values, and uh, the pressure is mapped to tube length, tubes per step, elevation. We have um, um, under uh, the pressure settings here. You can actually hand edit these pressure values if you want. So I could set it. Zero, zero. It might not show up too well unless we play back a little bit. No, Let's see. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of pressure settings to set. I think is that the front. Okay, that oh, there's the this other side. That's why I'm not seeing it. So here you can see the effect over on the other side because we have two of these strokes, right? So by setting the pressure values along the stroke, you can you can set. Um, where the uh, uh, where it's strongest and where you get the most spray. So, I've I've tried to do it so there's more spray at the front here, right? If we made that like five, then we'd get an enormous amount of spray sticking out on the front of that, right? It also affects the angle, so the angle's being pushed over maybe too much. So you can uh, kind of control the way those uh, those those the pressure values map into elevation and and stuff on the on the thing. Uh, so that gives you maybe more control than, than you'd get with particles. But another thing you could do is just take that curve and use it for uh, particle missions down the stroke. Notice there's a couple of other features with this in terms of the wakes. Um, there are a couple of emitters back here and a wake emitter here to emit wakes and foam so we get nice little streaming things off the back, uh, sort of like uh, the, the bow wake. So you can kind of more finely model uh, the wakes associated with the object. And uh, one other feature of this is that as the boat moves, you'll note that uh, um, the this NURBS plane moves with the boat. So what we do is we just simply take the translation of the boat, but not its rotation, and we attach that to the translation of this plane. So that the plane is always in a position where it will intersect with the boat and give us those curves, uh, even as it turns. Here's a render of the big boat anim file, and uh, you can see we have uh, uh, a wake at the back uh, with uh, some turbulence in the foam, and uh, and also we've got the uh, the spray happening along the front edge of the boat. Um, one problem with using paint effects for this spray is that you will get uh, as it as it moves up and down in this region. You know, if you get in close, the the individual particles seem to be moving along a trajectory. But the whole trajectory they're moving along will move up and down as the waves move up and down, as that, that curve moves up and down. That's somewhat unnatural because there should be a lag. Uh, when it goes up at the beginning of the, the spray, it shouldn't also affect the end of the spray, which is, is uh, what happens because of uh, the way the paint effects is actually non-dynamical that way. Um, it's really more like a, a cycling sort of effect. So if you replace that instead with some kind of particle emission, uh, you could probably get a, a, a pretty you know, natural result there in the front. Although the nice thing about the paint effects is that you can get a lot of detail and particles there um, without requiring, uh, it, it'll render quite fast. Uh, here's, a, here's a single frame more from the front. You can kind of see the, uh, the spray a little better in the front. 
That's some of the detail you get in it. Um, I've got another one uh, from, it shows more from the back and you can see the wake structure and the, uh, the shading on the, the foam. The file painted static wake um, is sort of an interesting technique you can use. Um, it uh, allows you to paint uh, the exact shape of a wake and it's there's no, on the fluid there's no dynamics or anything. All it is is like a texture really that you can paint into. But then you have the nice thing that you can kind of see the wake uh, and you can transform it. So let's say uh, here's our object and we have sort of an ocean and it's got some uh, it's got some observer speed on it, so it's like the ocean is moving. That's also good for rivers and things. And we have this object, and we're just imagining it's moving forward, even though it's actually stationary here. Now, if I, if I paint out like this, we're kind of defining a bump for a wake, and you notice it even affects our object, and our object will bump up over that. And you could, you know, you could try and define what you think is, is about the right uh, wake with uh, fall off on the edges. And we're sort of also displaying our texture while we're in this mode. The moment we go out of the, uh, the paint tool, we're painting density on uh, the wake grid that's in here. Now, there's also an initial state file on that. So um, if you um, we bring up the attribute editor here, uh, the uh, initial state, um, uh, this texture here, if I it should find it on disk. So when you first run this, you should see some kind of a wake there. If you don't, it's probably just because you, you haven't uh, got that. It's not able to find this file with uh, the way you've got things set up. Um, so this is obviously an extreme example, but you can also uh, you can paint the foam. So if we uh, go back, I've selected the, the foam grid, and we can... Uh, or hang on. No, I've, I didn't select the foam grid. I've <laughs> selected the wake. Let's go back. I'll select the foam. This is our foam grid here. And uh, now I'll paint that. Now to paint into the, the, the foam, um, we'll gain, uh, add contents, uh, we do the paint fluids tool, and uh, the options will set it to paint temperature now for the, the foam thing. And we'll just add into the, the values. Um, and I mean, this is not very good, but you know, you could, you could do a real nice foam painting that, that looked about right. And there's even texture on this thing, so it'll, it'll add a, an animated texture to the foam you paint. So now we'll go uh, back and, uh, and uh, look at it. So now we have uh, the object, and it's emitting this enormous wake in the foam. Now we could pick our, our objects, and if we go um, and uh, move them, uh, we can actually move the wake through the water and follow our object, right? So that's a way without relying on any fancy stuff, just to get the exact shape of wake and, and have it have it move along with your 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 character.